Well, George, it's great to be up here, and I get the best slide. I you think do, Jay. Our, our cautionary note really just sums up to whatever you hear me say about the future, don't use that for your investment decisions. So let's move on from there, George. Okay. As we're getting started, one of the first things I want to do is just play a quick video and show what the power of drones and analytics are in the industrial world. So what you saw there, let's flip over to the slides. What you saw there was a coal fire plant. It's actually not a Shell facility. Shell has no coal fire plants per se. But the ability to take data, analytics, particularly off of high sensor-based input, and be able to process that using artificial intelligence and machine learning to deliver insights is really what we think of as the beginning of the fourth industrial age. If it represents this convergence of both digital and physical assets really converging and coming together by being able to apply all kinds of sensor-based input to the delivery of insights to organizations. This ushering in of this new industrial age is really about understanding these physical assets and how the physical world can be digitized further, effectively creating a digital twin effectively in the cloud to be able to understand the current condition, the physicality, the state of the asset, and how it performs over time. And so this is what we're starting to do with customers like Shell. Yeah, it's great, George, and we're pretty excited about the opportunities. But let's talk a little bit about digital at Shell. It's something that we're working on and working on every day, the cloud sensor network. You see what it means for the opportunities for us to have a more productive environment and a safer environment. But it really puts an onus on the company to be able to move at speed. It's no longer something that will take years to do. We literally can do solutions like you see on the video in a matter of days, weeks, or at most months. So if I think about digital and the digital age, I really think about from a company point of view, it's speed. Can we get the data and do the change management to take advantage of great new technology like yours? Makes a ton of sense, Jay. And when we think about that speed of collecting that information, Today, we've been focused on this concept of aerial intelligence. The idea there yeah. is that you can collect critical amounts of information using industrial assets like a drone to be able to monitor a site, to be able to proactively understand any issues that might be occurring. So this particular example that you happen to be seeing here is a thermographic overlay on high resolution visual imagery that gives you an insight on where potential gas leaks might be occurring on a specific pipeline. So Kespri is being used today not only in the energy space, but also originally in mining and aggregates, where we focused on doing volumetric measurement of stockpiles, like the big stockpile of coal that you saw a moment ago, as well as being able to understand the state and condition of a rooftop and being able to assess the damage and extent of weather-related activities that are occurring on a weathering roof. If you look at these examples, and specifically what we're seeing in the energy sector, it's really about delivering real-time structural insights on what the physical condition of those key assets are. And of course, to Jay's point, how we do that in literally minutes and hours versus days and weeks. Well, we'd look at the opportunity for this aerial intelligence to really transform the way we operate. If you think about it, you might have a camera, you may have an employee that's actually looking around the, the asset with a drone or a sensor network that we'll have in place, we'll actually have real-time monitoring uh, without necessarily human having eyes on glass. 
the ability to take that sensor input and take an action, either for a safety incident or for us to optimize our production. It's really changing the way that we think about uh, running our assets. And in particular, partnerships with uh, Kespri, we'll see that in our research facility, we'll be implementing your new solution and we're already working on new use cases. So the exciting future together uh, really is giving us a lot of opportunity. Yep. And so if you look at that future today, it's about the sensor network that's emerging. The idea that Kespri started off as a drone company is actually now evolving into a much bigger picture. The ultimate vision for our platform is to be able to do this comprehensive data aggregation and visualize the information that's coming from all kinds of sensor-based input, whether that be visual, thermal, LIDAR-based input, and be able to aggregate that into one extreme view of a physical asset and digitize that in a meaningful way. That's great. Uh, I mentioned one of the assets we're starting with. It's 200 acres that we're actually able to get sensor analysis, both from the drones and other analytics that are coming on board. But that's just a start. Sometimes it's not 200 acres. It can be 2,000 acres, or some of our fields go above 20,000 acres. And the ability to be able to monitor that with technology gives us a new a platform that we're able to ensure that we have safe operations as well as more productive operations at a dramatically reduced cost. So Jay, I think you were going to talk a little bit about that safety that Shell prides itself in. It is. It's our primary concern. Uh, we have what we call at Shell goal zero. And goal zero is really simply no harm, no leaks. So it's something that we want to make sure, no matter if it's our employees, our contractors, or the environment around us, no harm to anyone that is dealing with Shell. The second thing is no impact to our environment, to be able to say no leaks, whether those be gas or liquid leaks. The technology that Kespri is able to bring is actually able to ensure that we can do better monitoring and inspection, so keeping people out of harm's way, yet getting the information, as well as if an anomaly does occur, that we're able to actually dispatch crews or take intervention action because they detect a leak or some sort of a release. So very much critical to our goal zero. When we started in the industrial sector, in fact, we actually started in mining and aggregates, and I think you saw an image of one of the stockpiles that you would typically measure. In the specific case of a stockpile measurement activity, it turns out it's one of the most occupationally hazardous jobs in the world because people fall off stockpiles, you break a leg, you sprain an arm. In a similar way, when we started to work in the insurance sector, the roofing space in particular happens to be the third most occupationally hazardous job in the country and probably the world when you look at the way that people fall off roofs all the time because uh, you're doing you know, manual inspection. The ability to automate that inspection, the ability to have a very strong understanding of the physical condition of that asset and to deliver that information in the safest possible manner became one of the key underpinnings and baselines of our company. When you think about that capability as a baseline, then you can layer in the increase in productivity. I mean, if you look at the possibilities of what's now occurred in terms of productivity and cost reduction, you'll hear a lot more about how Jay and other companies are actually now receiving that productivity gain in how they're doing aerial intelligence and other sensor-based input. No, George, you're quite right. We, we talk about the safety aspect, but with your technology and the aerial intelligence that we're able to, to get from it, we can actually predict failures and being able to schedule the maintenance of our pipelines or our compressors or activities that we need to do around the, the plant in a proactive manner. So no longer do we wait to a, a failure occurs and intervene, which obviously Kespri can help us with. They actually have new technology that's actually able to detect the failures before they happen. So having the infrared information, having the you know, unique ability to do the analytics to say, we really think you need to take action in this particular area. It's really transforming the, the way we're able to operate our plants. So more scheduled maintenance versus reactive maintenance increases the availability of our assets, allowing us to have more time to produce uh, product. So it's a great partnership, more safety, more productivity at a reduced cost. Thanks, Jay. So when we think about one of the key use cases that we're doing, particularly with Shell, is we're flying a thermographic solution into the market. So what I mean by that is on a Kespri drone today, we have both a high-resolution visual sensor that's actually tantamounted with 
radi radiometric data as well as thermography. And so these sensors are actually fusing together to be able to create a very accurate picture of specifically what's going on in that physical space, including being able to understand temper temperature differential. So the moment that you understand temperature differential on NASA, you're able to now know how hot that specific asset's running. Is there a potential leak? Is there a specific issue that we wouldn't have detected with the human eye previously? And this is the exact kind of use case where we can now drive not only the ability to find that issue early on, but of course, increase the productivity of the folks that are effectively on the ground that have responsibility for fixing the issues as they might occur. Yeah. So this future that's emerging is quite compelling. If you look at where we are today, we're in the beginning of this new sensor network that's emerging. If you think about why we're so enthusiastic about the partnership with Shell, it's because we see this as an opportunity to build this great new future forward with the help of industrial leaders like Shell in the market. This is why I'm proud to say that Shell also invested into Kespri in this past round as now an investor and of course, we're serving them as a customer. This full-scale collaboration that we're bringing into market, we see this not only as just providing a service on behalf of a company like Shell, but mutually working together to be able to understand what the future possibilities are, specifically when it comes to digitizing the industrial work world. No, it's fantastic, George. You know, and again, uh, I'm not only a customer, I'm actually an investor. So our Shell Ventures Fund looks at really uh, startups that are in the scale-up mode, and we bring them to market to a scale that's able to serve Shell at a more rapid pace by injecting funds both as a customer but as a, as a partner and an investor. And you hear the use case, it's quite uh, compelling. For me, especially as CIO, it's not just the engineering and the partnership with our engineering groups that you know, we use Kespri for, but it's also the consistency of putting data in a place that we can reuse. Because really in the digitalization age, it's actually all about the data and the ability to act on that data. And really with Kespri, we are looking at some really creative things around uh, the digital twin for our plants and be able to continue to exchange information across multiple platforms and using the cloud sensor network and technology that Kespri's bringing is really enabling Shell to transform the way we're able to operate our business. Yep, so in closing, this fourth industrial age that's emerged is about this new sensor network where drones, fixed sensors, data that's effectively being processed from sources that are not just manually collected are now delivering this insight to lots more users. We're powering that using artificial intelligence and machine learning, largely to drive this digital twin that starts to enable industrial work to happen in a more efficient manner. So that's what we had to talk about today, and thank you for the opportunity today. Thank you. Thank you. Great.